Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes. We've featured hundreds of tiny homes on this channel before and some that have found some clever ways to really expand the space. But today we're taking a tour of a truly unique tiny home design offering something we've never seen before, an expanding roof that actually allows you to have two full stories. So to be clear, we're not talking about a lofted bedroom that you often see in tiny home designs. We're talking about a full two-story tiny home that allows you to collapse the roof for travel, making it still completely road legal. And if you like these kind of videos where we feature unique homes, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new episode. I'm Aria. I'm Lawrence. And this is our tiny home built by our company, Wilderwise, and we're really excited to share it with you. A key inspiration for us in transitioning more into the tiny house lifestyle actually stemmed from renting a studio apartment that was far smaller than this home that we're sitting in. Having lived together with a significant other in a space that's a little more than half the size of this tiny home really put things into perspective. We finished this build, which is our very first build. It is our prototype back in 2021, and it really is a functional prototype. We actually towed this one over 6,600 miles across eight states last year. We were living in it full time for three months last summer. In building this home and in living in this home, we really were inspired by sharing with what is possible and showing people that you can be joyous and comfortable it's in a space that really suits you and really supports you in living in your values, which is what living tiny and going tiny has done for us. The cost of this particular build is at a starting price point of 85,000. Some of the key features of this home that make it unique compared to other builds is that the whole roof raises by three and a half feet to double the square footage. You have a full height second story. This home is only a 21 foot trailer but offers almost 300 square feet of living space which really makes it more maneuverable. When the roof is lowered, the dimensions of this home allow for it to be legally taken on roads across all 50 states without special permits which makes it easier for us to feasibly tow the home to new locations. It makes it more realistic that we can use this home for travel, and then it is equally as robust for long-term living as well. First, I'm going to show you the exterior of the home. I think the most standout feature that you can see here is how tall the space is. Our home integrates a lifting roof mechanism when it is lifted. As you see here, uh, it is 17 feet tall, has two full stories. All of the white posts and beams throughout the whole exterior of the home is the aluminum framing and then the wall panels in between the framing also contribute to the structural integrity and durability of the space. This particular build has a vinyl siding. It is the most lightweight option. It's also the most affordable option. We were doing a lot in the design to keep the weight down, so that was a consideration. We have our leveling jacks as well as stack jacks to create stability. If you are expecting to have like high winds or adverse weather, we recommend having as many points touching the ground as possible to make sure that the trailer and the home is stable. As we move back on the home, we have our electrical and water hookups. This home is fully on grid. This is a 50 amp cord, but we have found even when this is plugged into like a residential plug that's only like 15 amp, we're able to use the home like pretty extensively. I mean, we use like one appliance at a time, uh, all the lights work, fans, plug in your computer, charge your phone, like it actually works pretty well even if you don't have like a full 50 amp hookup. 
It does not have solar. It does have water tanks though for gray water and fresh water. And in our new builds, we actually have integrated spaces in the trailer to keep the water tanks and the batteries. Wilderwise is a licensed trailer manufacturer. So we build it from scratch out of aluminum, which is the foundation of the entire structure. And then, oh, what is this thing here? So this is actually a blown out tire. One of our tires had completely shredded and we didn't know it when we were driving. It didn't affect how the home was towed. Comes to my next tip, which is if you're ever towing anything to bring spare tires, we keep all of our spares on the tongue. So we have some tire holders. Also on the tongue, we have a storage box. That's where we keep all of our cords, our gray water outlet lines, stack jacks, things like that, stuff that is utilized on the outside of the space. I'd love to show you the inside next, so come on with me and let's check it out. So welcome to our living room and dining room. In the living room space, we've set it up as a lounge space to watch TV, read a book, whatever you please. The whole house has storage in every direction, particularly here, all of these couch cushions pull up for storage space underneath. This module also moves so it can be placed in whatever way is most comfortable. In the dining section, we have storage underneath this table, which does extend. The stools have storage as well. Here we also have a mini split unit, which is for both heating and cooling. This is a 110, 120 volt system. We're plugged into like a standard residential outlet and it works just fine. All builds include a uh, circulation system with ducts and 12 volt fans, which will help circulate the air from the lower level here up to the upper level. It can get hot upstairs without that added circulation. The staircase is another aspect that has storage in it. We've integrated these little doors into each step and it allows for you know, a lot more space to put your items. I think that's a big factor for people in tiny houses is like, how do I downsize all of my stuff to fit in this small space? And so what we focused on is making sure that there's lots of little nooks and crannies and drawers and cabinets and places to store your belongings. So although you're downsizing, you can still feel comfortable living in the space that you're in. Welcome to our tiny house galley kitchen. In this space, we have all the necessary appliances to live comfortably in the house. We have an induction cooktop as well as a convection oven. Lawrence and I love cooking and even in the small space with two burners and only a small oven, we have cooked some really amazing meals together. It's actually really fun to see how you can still create these extravagant meals and if there's something even more satisfying about laying it all out and getting to enjoy it even in this small space. We have a just a standard fridge here as well as a dishwasher. We really love having it. It makes it possible for us to spend more time doing the things we love instead of washing dishes. It's been uh, really useful for us. Here we have our washer dryer. It is a combo unit. There's lots of storage in the kitchen as well. So we have cabinetry on this side. We have space for a pantry on this side. Up in this area, we have, uh, it's kind of our electrical. A lot of the like wiring connections are here. The cord that uh, connects to the actuator, which lifts the roof is also here. What we've done is we've designed it to be in a space where there's no risk of operating the system when say someone is upstairs or you haven't gone through the whole process. So this is the cord that we use. And as you can see, it can't be plugged in anywhere where you accidentally leave it on. So we have to have a extension cord, plug it here, and then you operate the roof. You really could never leave it on and accidentally bump the switch or have your kid bump the switch because you would have a cord in the middle of your kitchen. <laughs> so safety feature, very basic safety feature. We also have all of our light switches here and our valves and pumps for the off-grid water system. Although we do not have solar, um, the home does have some battery storage. The lights and the fan on the composting toilet is plugged into a 12 volt system. 
We do have batteries, so all the times we parked off-grid, we were just doing quick overnights, we still had access to the light, the toilet still worked, and all of those batteries are stored in this cabinet. At the back of the home here is our bathroom. That includes an off-grid toilet. In this build, we have a composting toilet, which was really easy to set up, really easy to maintain, um, can be used literally anywhere, no black tank. Highly recommend for especially people that don't have a sewer connection. This is a really low maintenance way to manage waste and it works very well. <laughs> In the middle here, we have our vanity, sink, Pretty standard storage space for all of your toiletries. Under the sink, we have our water heater, piping, and of course, you know, cleaning supplies and things like that that we use regularly. And then behind me here is our shower. It's a decent sized shower. I, I mean, it's, it's spacious enough for us even to both stand in there and rinse off our feet. We've also added some film over the window for privacy, which is great as if there's a window in the shower. We also have a pocket door here, really easily just opens and closes and creates a little barrier. <laughs> All right, let's go upstairs. We are in one of the two designated spaces on the second story. This is what we set up as an office. This area for our purposes is set up with a desk and some lounge areas so that we can relax, read a book, handle work, work on art projects, play music, you know, generally just use it as a space where we can hang out and enjoy. But it can certainly be made sleepable. You can fit either one double bed or two twin beds here if you need additional sleeping space. So this is a really versatile, flexible space that can really be used to any capacity that, that you may need it for. And the most important part of the upstairs is the bedroom. You can see here we have a queen size bed and you can fit up to a king. And you can see that there's front to back storage there for suitcases, out of season clothing, uh, any recreational items that you may want to store and have available without necessarily being out in the space. The queen size we think is perfect. It allows you to walk around the bed on both sides. And you can see there's tons of storage space, cabinetry for all of your clothes, personal items, and anything else you might need. Another benefit of this cabinetry is that it provides some sense of privacy and separation between the two spaces on the second story. It does feel nice and open. You get the great natural lighting and the ability to easily transition out into another area of the home. So this is no loft space, this is a full second story and I'm six feet tall and you can see at the lowest point on this upper level, I'm not in any way hitting my head, I'm not actually even that close. And the roof is lifted to the full exterior height of 17 feet tall, which leaves all this wonderful headroom here. But in order to take this home on the road and travel in it, you do have to lower the roof down below 13.6 so that you can take it on highways across all 50 states. And in order to do so, it's a fairly simple process that I myself can take care of in you know, five to 10 minutes. So that includes moving all of these gray cabinets that are down here on the lower level in order to make space for these upper cabinets to drop with the roof all the way down to the floor. And there's a space up here for every one of these cabinets. You don't have to take them out of the home or even downstairs in order to do it. So everything's contained within this area of the home. This is a single electric actuator that does the lifting and lowering motion to raise and lower the roof. And it's supported by six gas springs, one of which is left exposed here. And it's a simple flip of a switch. It takes about 90 seconds for the roof to go from fully open to fully closed and vice versa. So it's a really simple process. We really
really advocate for freedom in a lot of different ways. Freedom in your finances, freedom in the way you live your life. The fact that we were able to really dive into building a business around the values of affordable housing is one of the inspirations that really led us towards developing this business and this brand. It allows you to have the freedom to move to new locations and then also gives you that really comfortable feel of being in a permanent space. So in May 2023, we will be delivering our first two customer units. These are people that jumped in early on to purchasing a brand new product. So they really helped support the company grow. Now we're supporting them with a new home. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you soon with another unique home tour. Thank you.